Hello everyone. Thank you for watching my videos. And thank you for everyone that subscribed to my videos. Today's video is going to be about the new light. What well, Watchtower is saying that their information from from God Jehovah comes down to the government body. But was this the case from the beginning from the original Charles T. Russell's and Judge Ruckford's time? No, it wasn't. There was no such thing, new light. That was later down the line around Nathan's North time, the third president. So he fell to read their own literature, and so they started changing things around and calling new light from Jehovah. I have proof from their own yearbook, the International Bible Society. Association. Here it is right here. This book was written in 1926. What I'm going to do, I'm going to play this twice. It's on page 14. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So y'all can follow. I'm going to play it twice. For some reason, some people don't understand what they're reading. But by playing it twice, maybe they can understand what this is talking about. Some time later, the Lord made it known to the faithful students of his word that the day of his preparation ended and the Lord came to his temple in 1918. Even as the Lord had promised, now greater light began to shine upon the word of truth and the minds of the consecrated began to be more clearly illuminated. Revelation 11, 19. Not that the fundamental doctrines were changed, not that there were new doctrines advanced nor that someone had discovered new light, but the truth became clearer and the Lord gave his people a clearer vision of his plan. This increased light quickened the brethren and increased their zeal and devotion. Since then the truly consecrated have appreciated the fact that no man is responsible for this increased light, that the truth is not man's truth but the Lord's, that the Lord has not invited anyone to follow man but to follow Christ, and that it is the privilege of the consecrated to earnestly seek for the will of the Lord God and to do that will. The truth is the Lord God's, the light is his, and he causes it to shine on his truth in his own due time. And all of the consecrated who are in proper condition of mind and heart to receive it, to receive and rejoice in the light. Some time later, the Lord made it known to the faithful students of his word that the day of his preparation ended and the Lord came to his temple in 1918. Even as the Lord had promised, now greater light began to shine upon the word of truth and the minds of the consecrated began to be more clearly illuminated. Revelation 11. 19. Not that the fundamental doctrines were changed, not that there were new doctrines advanced nor that someone had discovered new light, but the truth became clearer and the Lord gave his people a clearer vision of his plan. This increased light quickened the brethren and increased their zeal and devotion. Since then the truly consecrated have appreciated the fact that no man is responsible for this increased light, that the truth is not man's truth but the Lord's, that the Lord has not invited anyone to follow man but to follow Christ and that it is the privilege of the consecrated to earnestly seek for the will of the Lord God and to do that will. The truth is the Lord God's, the light is his, and he causes it to shine on his truth in his own due time. And all of the consecrated who are in proper condition of mind and heart to receive it do receive and rejoice in the light. Okay. What you're seeing here... That he, um, his light causes the truth is the Lord God's light. So the light increase. It doesn't 
become new. And our way back up here to the top. Talk about not that fundamental doctrines were changed. I mean, all the doctrines will stay the same from Charles C. Russell's time all the way up to 1926. And there was new, there were not, that's what it says, not that there were new doctrines and and if someone had discovered new light. So, so people, what you're reading here and heard, that everything that was written from Charles T. Russell's time to this time of the, when this book was written, nothing was supposed to change. Nothing. Everything that Charles T. Russell preached and teach was to continue all the way up to our time. You see this for yourself. That means there was not supposed to be new light of truth. It's just the light was supposed to come clearer of the um, information of the Bible to uh, say there's a scripture that you don't understand. Later on, someone figure out what that scripture, but you didn't change the main doctrines. Okay, when this book was written, it was written 1926 and 1975. What does those two dates got in common with each other? Well, 1925, 1975, the world was going to end. And all the proof is in their own literature for those two dates. So the so after 1926, when this information was put out, that the doctrine did not change. I mean, there's publications out there, Jehovah's Witnesses, Harp of God, Minions Now Living Will Never Die, Book of Salvation, and a few others. I mentioned the date of 1925, the world was going to end. Because remember that they said there was new, no new doctrine. Now, let's go from there. This is the side of the watchtower I want you to, to stay on. To see how evil the world is. How going through that, you would uh, enter in Satan's world. But when you become knowledge and open-minded and realize that something's wrong with their teaching. You'll be like this guy to find out everything you looked at was nothing like a big giant canvas that the watchtower made you and had you stayed in for all of these years not picking up the canvas to see the real truth that the watchtower has hidden from you all of these years. And I'm going to show you some of the original teaching of Charles T. Russell. You see right here, Charles T. Russell believed in the divine of Christ. And you go on down and you see that uh, his father's dying the, from, the gift from fathers after dying on the cross. Okay, that means right there, witnesses, Charles T. Russell and Judge Rockford. Remember, Judge Rockford was took over all the way up from Charles T. Russell's die in 1916 and believed the cross because this book was under his direction to be made. So there's the proof on that. So your doctrine has been changed. Paranology. 
There you go. Charles T. Russell and other people believe that the Great Pyramid Giza was built by the Hebrews. And they call it the Bible in stone, which I found research in Charles T. Russell's admitting that the pyramid was a stone, stone Bible. Today, this would be called false teaching, false doctrine. Yes, I would agree with that. Totally. Christ return, 1874. What is this showing? The Gentile times was supposed to end it. Okay, what was the Gentile times? Nobody explained what that meant. It means that... Does anyone know Jehovah's Witnesses? What the Gentile times meant? When, when Charles T. Russell meant that? Well... Let's go a little bit further. He was in a theater with the Jews attending attention. The Jews and the Christians alike are shocking, but his teaching that Jews should not convert to Christianity because Christ Russell believed that the land of Palestine belongs to who? The Jewish people. The God was going to be calling them back to their homeland, and they would be the center of the earth. Let's make it so y'all can read it again. Russell believed that the land of Palestine belongs exclusively to the Jewish race, that God was now calling them back to their homeland, and they would be the center of the earthly leadership under God's kingdom. Jehovah's Witnesses, that means Charles T. Russell thought in 1914 the Jewish people was going to be called back to their homeland, and God was going to open the world up around Jerusalem, around the Jewish people. And, but the only problem is, he died in 1916, and the Jews did not, was not allowed to take their homeland back until 1948. That is the date the Jews was able to take their homeland back in 1948, and they are being gathered all over the world to go back to their homeland, even if they get rid of all the Muslims, then the rest of them can return home. Jehovah's Witnesses, this is the stuff that the Watchtower has been hiding in front of you all these years. They didn't make new light for guiding you into a truth. They gave you new light to keep you away from the truth away from Charles T. original teaching. Even the Bible students today still teach that the Jews are God's chosen people. Even teach that Christ died on the cross. So your new light is a false light. If you don't be like this man and us Jehovah's Witnesses who left this organization, was able to pick up the canvas of Watchtower and to see everything that was in front of us was a lie. Charles T. Russell did not change his teaching. Judge Rockford did not change the teaching after 1926 when this book was made. He changed the teaching in around 1931. That's when he started making a new doctrine new teaching, and kept everybody away from the original teaching of Charles T. Russell's. So Jehovah's Witnesses, if you're using Charles T. Russell as your le leader, then you're wrong, because Judge Rockefeller was. Thank you, and have a nice day.